and all this gibberish was going on all the time, and he was getting hungrier by the minute. He sat down at the table, and I mean, just a really unfollowing heat, and went, My God, would somebody please pray? <laughs> he was hungry, and he knew he couldn't eat until somebody prayed. And out of the blue, he just said, My God, will somebody pray? You'd be surprised at the neighbors you have and people in our neighborhoods and are asking somebody to pray. I don't know if you know it or not, but we're in a hard way. Somebody has got to pray. Have we neglected prayer? Do we use it as a just a bygone thing? Let me read some scriptures. I want to talk about some of us. Sometimes we become indifferent in our walk with God. But prayer has become a lost art in many places and conditions. It's only, it's prayer is more than, a, than an emergency number. That's right. I said prayer is more, thank God it works in emergencies. But you may not know it, prayer is not only talking to God, but prayer will make some inroads that will touch the throne of God that will have an effect on your life. I hope you hear what I'm saying because no matter what age you are, if you learn to pray, he said all things are possible to him that believe it. If you believe, you're going to learn how to pray. We've run everywhere else but to God in prayer. We'll call every neighbor there is. We'll call everybody you know trying to get some of your needs met, but you won't pray. I'm sorry, but God may have be taking us down those roads so that we can learn how to pray. When the children are in need, hopefully they come running to mama because they know mama will pray. It don't matter what it is. If it's just a hangnail or a scratch, you take time, stop, and pray and ask God for help. It's become a lost thing. We'll go everywhere. We'll run to the hospital. We'll do everything else, but we won't take time to pray. Prayer is the, 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 the means by which he touches the throne of God. I just read to you in Acts chapter 10. He said, Cornelius, your prayers and your giving has come up as a memorial before God. In other words, it's come up. If God was looking from the throne down, he'd say, Cornelius, your prayers have come up to me for consideration. I've heard your prayers. I've seen your giving. And now, what is the request that you want? There's people in town that don't know it. Periodically, I'll jump in my automobile and I just drive up and down the street. Lord, touch the people in that hall. I don't know what they're in the middle of, but Lord, touch them people. Touch them. Move them. Do whatever you can do, but hear the prayer. Hear us, oh God, hear us. Let me read just a little bit. In Psalm 123, 4, it says, Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. There's many that have become indifferent in our prayer life, in our walk with God, so that we usually have God only as an emergency. Isaiah 32, 9 says, Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. In other words, the Lord is calling us back into a season of prayer. If we're going to see anything done, folks, we're going to have to pray. We're living in serious hours. I, I'm sorry, I'm at a point where I don't, I'm sick and tired of playing church. I, I just don't want to do that no more. Been through all the emotions, that's not why I'm here. I'm a, when I'm here, I'm as serious as a heart attack. You ain't never been around anyone that had a heart attack. A heart attack will kill you. Hello? A heart attack will take you out just like that. Immediately, when your heart quits, you're done, baby. You might have a few minutes or, or a few seconds to struggle with breath, but when that ticker quits, honey, you're done. That's how serious we are with God. You better take life a little bit more serious. I'm not playing church anymore. The hours 
the extension of God Himself. Prayer will make inroads very to the very throne room of God. I don't want to come to church just to sing a few songs. I want to singing. And that's all part of it. But that's not the only reason I'm here. He wants us to learn some of the ways of God and what God expects of us. How long has it been when you've been in need and you've taken the time to go into your own room, dug the Word of God out, and have done nothing but sit there and pray? How long has it been? How long has it been? Hopefully it hasn't been too long. But I'm here today because I had to learn how to pray. I didn't always know how to pray. But God's put me through enough situations where you, where you can learn how to pray. I've been in a scary situation where I thought I was going to lose everything. I thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought I was going to lose my family. Because financial stress, all kinds of stresses come. But honey, you've got to know how to pray. It's not just for the passive buyer. It's for you. It's for every one of us. Learn how to pray. Well, I don't know how. Well, you better start learning. You've got to sit down with God's Word and begin to say, Lord, I, I need help here today. I need help. He said, rise up. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Isaiah 47, 8 says, Therefore hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, it's only me, and nobody else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. There's more in life than just you. Amen. And so the Lord is saying, those of you that are at ease, start calling, stop praying. Amos 6 and 1 says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. We're at a time where many people want everybody else to do it for them and they don't want to do anything for themselves. Hello? Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. And there's a story in Matthew 22 and verse 5. It says, But they made light of it and went their ways and to their farm, another to his merchandise. There was a wedding that they were bid to come. He said, I want you to go. Go invite them, tell them to come. He said, But they made light of the invitation. This morning, God's calling us to prayer. And I hope you don't make light of the situation. Hello. There are people that are in need. I hope you don't take it just lightly. He said, but they made light of it. In Matthew 24, verse 12, it says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 